Hello, welcome back. So this is BI3144 and we're in cellular biophysics. I'm going to start the topic, which is mechanics of springs, beams and cells based on equilibrium theory. So as a sort of precursor to that, I just want to remind you that if we look at a mitotic cell, basic process of division in a eukaryotic cell, in this particular case, this is a movie with a HeLa cell with the red chromosomes and green mitotical spindles, then you see a lot of movement. You see uh, this kind of pushing movement, which is the spindle segregation machinery. You see the strand of uh, DNA being, the strand of the spindle being eventually truncated. And if I go back to the beginning, you also see the chromosomes being pushed into an arrangement. So at all these stages, there is mechanics involved. And this is uh, also something we discussed in the early stages of this course, when I showed you the movies of crawling cells. So obviously mechanics plays a role, but what are these molecules that drive it? And so we're gonna talk a bit about the cytoskeleton, their molecules and types, and then talk from that, dive into some theory, some mathematical derivations of springs, their elasticity, and linear elasticity theory and image minimization as a principle. So in essence, the maths is really going to be about the question of energy minimization. And then I'll talk a little bit more on beam theory and uh, other things. But for the immediate, this module, it's just going to be an introduction to cytoskeleton and molecular types. And some of this, for those of you who are taking cell biology, is actually quite familiar. So if you look at this image, um, it was generated in 1913 by swelling oleic acid with water in excess water and caused structures that look very much like cells. You see these tubes, the convoluted structures. And in fact, when we go back and look at the classic images, the first few images of complex eukaryotic cells, like the neurons by Ramon Cajal, then it would it becomes apparent that these structures are even more complex with an interplay of both external and internal processes happening that are driving this formation. And uh, we can say a combination of surface tension, bending of the membrane and active mechanochemistry, but just membrane mechanics are not enough to generate the cell-shaped diversity that we see. And for this, we're going to today talk about the so-called endoskeleton of the cells or cytoskeleton. This is the skeleton that is inside the cells. Uh, we are not going to talk about the extracellular matrix and some other structures that also give structure because they are not always as ubiquitous. So you will see this these uh, cytoskeletal proteins almost all across the evolutionary tree. And actin and microtubules are the very commonly uh, described ones. So we're going to talk about actin microtubules and intermediate filaments, the third property, the third of these so-called canonical cytoskeletal elements. What you see is a meshwork of microtubules with a nucleus in the center. And it's made up of an alpha beta tubulin uh, subunit, which forms a protofilament in a sort of head to tail fashion. These protofilaments form a circle, a cylinder. They wrap around each themselves um, with a plus end indicating the growing end and the minus end indicating the shrinking end. This does not have to do with electric polarity. This is just simply a kinetic polarity. And these cylindrical structures have a diameter of 25 nanometers. Um, indeed, the tubulin dynamics, uh, the growth and shrinkage, is driven by GTP nucleotide binding and hydrolysis to GTP. Uh, tubulin has a GTPase domain, an active enzymatic domain for GTPase activity. Um, these microtubules uh, with this 25 nanometer diameter canonically um, also have an unusual structure in the sense that they have a seam. Uh, which is to say that when, when you go around the cylinder, there is a slight spiral and there is an offset. So at some point, the if you follow any one set of tubulin dimers along a, across the protofilaments, you come to a structure where there's an offset and that offset is called the seam. And uh, these seams have been indicated to play a role in dynamic instability. There's a lot more literature on this. We will not be talking about the biochemistry or structure of it as much as we will talk about the dynamics in the coming lectures. For the moment, I only want you to remember that this is a cylinder and it has a, a thickness which is determined by the um, the wall of the cylinder is determined by the alpha beta tubulin dynamics. 
Actin, on the other hand, forms these kind of meshwork structures, which consist of just one kind of protein in that typically globular actin or G-actin uh, with a subunit size of 5 nanometers and uh, a pitch which either, if you consider a 1 or 2 protofilament uh, system, is uh, 5.19 nanometers or 72 nanometers. Pitch, if you remember, is the height traveled for one circle to be completed. So in an angular sense, along the length of the lattice, how much time, how many, what linear distance has traveled before it returns to the same angular position. In fact, uh, there are multiple isoforms of uh, actin, alpha, beta, gamma, and these are usually developmentally expressed. The protein itself, even across species, so right-hand side is alpha actin from a mammalian system, and compared to a plasmodium falciparum, the malaria parasite actin, and you see that the structure is slightly more elongated in the comparison that is made here and from cryo-electron microscopy data. Coming to the so-called third system, it is intermediate filaments, and intermediate filaments uh, are less understood. They also form more symmetric, that is to say not like plus and minus end structures. So I may have missed that, but the barbed ends of actin are like the plus ends of microtubules and pointed ends are like the um, minus ends of microtubules. These terminologies become relevant when we come back to polymer dynamics and uh, polymerization kinetics at the very end. But uh, suffice to say that for the moment, we will focus on the mechanics and assume that the structures are static. So it turns out that uh, intermediate filaments are more likely to be static. They form these kind of higher order structures of protofilaments of two helices grouped together into four strings and so on and so forth. And uh, Vimentin, keratin, that's in our hair, lamin, GFAP, all these are examples of intermediate filaments. And part of the reason for causing them intermediate filaments is historical because the diameter of the actin filaments is uh, the narrowest, the thinnest, 5 nanometers. Uh, 13 protofilaments, 27, 25 nanometers is the diameter of the microtubules, and uh, intermediate filaments are intermediate to these two. So, in a living cell, in an intact cell, uh, all these proteins play a role. And uh, I'm just going to take an example of the fact that hereditary diseases that are involved in mutations in ankyrin, uh, spectrin, uh, protein 4.1 or 4.2, lead to cell shape defects in RBCs, which indeed lead to diseases. So where are all these proteins localized? So in the case of red blood cells, which is the simplest cell you can think of because it doesn't have a nucleus in its mature form, uh, in most mammalian systems at least, uh, consists of an actin pinning point and spectrin um, uh, fibers, spectrin ro ropes, you may say, um, between these uh, pinning points. And these are anchored in the membrane, as you can see, through these band proteins. Um, this entire pinning point is then called a junctional complex, which is quite complex, consisting of band 4.1 and chitin and uh, so on and so forth. So, uh, the point is that uh, the membrane has, or rather, I'm sorry, the cell structure is determined by the cytoskeleton and mutations in it, sequence mutations in it cause mechanical differences, which in turn cause uh, diseases. And we are going to try and understand the basic mechanics so that we can come back to answer the more complex questions. Uh, but as I said at the beginning, we are only looking at the endo endogenous cytoskeleton because that is, in fact, apparently even conserved all the way to bacteria, as we can see over here with the bacterial cytoskeleton, where uh, MREB is an actin homologue, um, which you see in the green lower panel, as is PARM, which uh, segregates plasmids, FTSZ, which is responsible for the division of uh, cells, is a tubulin homologue at a structural level. Uh, but none of them form the kind of elaborate uh, tubulin-like structures um, that we see in eukaryotes. So you could argue it's a primitive tubulin in, in some senses. So for the next step, we're going to talk a little bit about the theory that helps us understand what the nature of these properties that govern the details of the cytoskeletal elements and lead to the um, properties at the cellular level. And we're going to talk a little bit about mechanical equilibrium with the idea of asking the question, can we find the optimum? And what is it? What is a system optimizing a mechanical system? And can we then apply that to cellular protein molecular systems?